Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. A short while ago, I started getting Twitter and Discord DMs surrounding Young Yaz's video from earlier today discussing an already outdated topic of the Unstoppables microtransaction outfits in Fallout 76. A great many of them accused Young Yav of clickbait, a few others had accused him of making a mountain out of a molehill in regards to the microtransactions and their pay-to-win elements. Now, I'm not one to record response videos very often, but I thought this bore discussing as it does affect a crossover of viewers between his channel and mine, and it does also very much affect the consumer, or at least those few of you that still play Fallout 76. I think when dealing with a topic such as this, it'd be very important that I take in the basic facts surrounding this in two different stages before I provide my opinion on the matter. The first segment will be the information surrounding the Fallout 76 microtransactions in question, and the second will be a very brief overview of Yong Ya's video delivery, and then I'll give my take on the matter. As always, links to any sources used, including a link to Yong Ya's video, will be in the description down below. So, the Fallout 76 microtransactions that Young Yao was discussing were somewhat interesting in their own right, if a bit after the fact. Here's what's going on. In late January, it was announced that there would be new Unstoppables costumes available within the Atomic Shop. The Silver Shroud, Manta Man, the Inspector, and Grognak the Barbarian, with the Mistress of Mystery, the fifth member of the Unstoppables, being only obtainable through gameplay. Now, each of the four costumes within the Atomic Shop would cost the player 800 atoms each, which if one were to purchase atoms in order to obtain the four costumes, it would cost between $20 and $25, depending on which atom packs one buys. Now, the benefits from these costumes was a cumulative 15 HP increase per member in your party that wears a unique costume for a maximum cumulative effect of 75 additional hit points. Now, this provides each player with a rounded 4.5% hit point increase per costume to a maximum of a little under 25% hit point increase, assuming the player has reached the maximum base of 320 HP. And just so everyone is aware, the hit point scale within Fallout 76 is not based on character level, but it is a simple formula of a 250 HP base, and then an additional 5 HP per each point of endurance invested with a maximum cap of 14 points. This provided advantage for the Unstoppables ran for a period of one week, ending on February 4th, which means the HP bonus is is no longer present. Now, this also follows off of the back of Bethesda's Senior VP of Global Marketing and Communication, Pete Hines, stating at PAX Australia in October 2018 that all microtransactions within Fallout 76 would be cosmetic only and they would not affect gameplay. And those are the facts surrounding the Unstoppables. Now, in regards to Young Ya's video, Young Ya spent the first four minutes of his video reminding everyone of the lies Ubisoft told about microtransactions in The Division, Electronic Arts' now infamous pride and accomplishment quote, and many others, including several statements made by Bethesda. He then outlined pretty much everything that I've gone over factually regarding the Fallout 76 microtransactions, and then he summarized his video stating that Bethesda blatantly lied to their customers. There's not much additional fact that needs to go on in there. However, now that we have the basic outline in front of us, here's my take on this entire situation. Young Ya's statements were somewhat sensationalized against what some are considering a minor transgression at best. Some even feel that Young Ya may have been tilting at that particular windmill so often that he's now merely jumping at shadows. Now, there are a couple of different angles to look at here. First, Bethesda claimed that there would be no microtransactions that affect gameplay. That is a statement of fact. We know this. Some feel that Young Ya was focusing in on a technicality in order to incite rage for views, a common enough accusation and one that I myself have had leveraged against my channel on nearly a daily basis. However, there is no denying that Bethesda very much did make that statement that there would be no gameplay altering microtransactions and even a timed pay for advantage microtransaction is still a pay for advantage microtransaction. And in that, I completely agree that Bethesda did go against their own word, making yet one more in a very long string of terrible decisions surrounding the game, its business model, and Bethesda's seeming incompetence with this game and the issues that are spawned from the use of Gamebryo 2.0, aka the creation engine. So taking that into account, is Young Ya tilting at windmills or making a mountain out of a molehill? Well, that, I think, comes down to a certain amount of personal preference. From what I see, these developers lied yet again, and Yong Yao was bringing that information, however belatedly, to light for a great many people. Yes, it had been kicked around on the game's subreddit for a very long time, but you have to remember that the Reddit-goers make up a very small percentage of gamers out there, and in spite of that information already being out there, there are a large number of people that were not in possession of this knowledge. So, no. 
I don't think it's a mountain out of a molehill issue in the slightest. This is a very clear-cut example of Bethesda going back on their word. I fully agree with Yang Ya that the limited time frame of these hit point advantages could very easily be a toe in the water to see if it gets bitten off before more predatory systems come into play. Some people will always continue to give the benefit of the doubt, but we all have seen similar behaviors so many times in the past that it's all but expected now, and it absolutely should not be. Yang Ya does his best to point that out within the first four minutes of his video, which, while I personally find extremely tedious, I am sure there are a great many people that find my introductions tedious as well, even with them being a minute or less on average. Now, at the end of the day, I look at this, and there's only one real answer for me. Bethesda went back on their word and instigated pay-to-win microtransactions in a game where they stated very explicitly they would not do this. It doesn't matter in the slightest that they put a timer on those pay-to-win mechanics, even if those mechanics are merely boosted health. Again, here I agree with Yong Ya. These companies absolutely should not feel comfortable lying directly to their customers' faces and expect those gamers to continue buying their products. It's shocking to me that so many people still do, to be honest. So while some express their frustration that Yang Yao was somehow making a mountain out of a molehill, I would remind everyone that with the video game industry, it is always a case of push-pull tactics designed to move the goalpost ever further down the field. It is how the AAA industry has arrived in the deplorable state that it is in in 2019 with more badness and banality on the horizon. And I would also like to take a moment external to this topic to say to my viewers specifically, thank you for sticking around. I was gone for an exceptionally long time, and then I came back with one of the hamsters turning the wheels in my brain seemingly paralyzed due to inactivity. Here's hoping the rust has been kicked loose and I can finally reason and rationalize correctly as opposed to turning out a series of subpar videos. Even though I highly doubt, even with my brain running on all cylinders, that I'll be able to stretch out a video like this nearly as long as young. Yeah, I can. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.